actually lower than it would be in a bad, if you look at the two really worst years of bad flu epidemics, uh, we lost about 60,000 people in, uh, in, in, I think it was 2017 and 2016. Correct. But Dr. Sensakovich can correct me if the exact years. Right. We lost around 60,000 people, but but the denominator, the amount of people who actually get the flu, Correct. is going to be a much lower number because people take flu shots. Okay, so the next question then that arises is that when we hear on the TV that today 200 people died and then this week 500 people died and that's causing fear and panic in the public, are these the real numbers that we should be talking about? Or we should be comparing them with the worst flu epidemic that can cause even more deaths than what Corona is causing, so that people understand these numbers and there's no fear and panic. Do you agree with that statement, Louis? That's a very fair statement. I think that you would compare this more, more accurately to a, a very bad flu season. And I wouldn't react to the raw numbers simply because the denominator, which we've talked about in this case, is going to be significantly large, larger than the flu. So as a percentage of the people who contract coronavirus, the percentage is going to be much lower. The raw numbers are probably going to be about equal when all said and done to a very, very bad flu season or maybe two seasons. Great, Lou. I think that's what we wanted to have the American people know. There's a couple of other things that we need to discuss with Dr. Sensakovich, but uh, one other thing that I want the American people to know is that not to rely on anecdotal information, observational information, but to rely on randomized trials that show effectiveness of drugs and vaccines. What is happening in the public is that we hear three people got better using a hydroxychloroquine, then everybody wants it. And then we make observations which are inherently biased. So the best way of knowing whether a drug is effective or not is randomized controlled trials. People have been talking about them, the trials have started. So it may be prudent to wait and see what these trials show. Now, in a desperate situation, a doctor can use whatever he wants. But for a ma vast majority, we should wait and find out if these drugs actually work. Because you may be doing some harm by using it in a manner which is not really, really proven to be true. A uh, case in example is people are using hydroxychloroquine and a few of them have died because they had cardiac conditions and had prolonged QT interval. So, the rest of the discussion, I think, is more uh, infectious disease based, and then we'll get that done with Dr. Sensakovich, and then Lou will ed edit all this and then send it over to you and to Dr. Sensakovich. Once it's all edited, then we'll see if we can try and distribute this so that uh, American people can make a wise choice as to what should be done. Anything else to add, Lou? Dr. Sharma, I agree with everything you say, and, and also follow the numbers, follow the data. Um, don't react to the two cases of some, that somebody knew someplace. But if you follow the data and the numbers, they will they'll lead you to the more logical and uh, conclusions. And if you do that, you should be at least calm in your approach to this. Absolutely right. So I think uh, the education hopefully works and we should keep doing all the things that need to be done social distancing washing our hands wearing masks that all is very important uh, but we should not be fearful and we should try to avoid panic